You're listening to the Weekend Sport Podcast with Jason Pine from Newstalk ZB. James McConey time. James is already up in the Northern Hemisphere preparing for the Rugby World Cup. He joins us from there. James, we've been talking Rugby World Cup underdogs this afternoon, so um, maybe we can start there. Who are you backing to give us all a bit of a surprise in France as an underdog? Yeah, I think the big underdogs uh, will be England. Uh, they they <laughs> look so... <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, uh, forget about that loss to Fiji. I think they're going to bounce back. Look, honestly, I, I know England um, will be hurting from that. And, uh, you know, but let's be honest, I think Fiji will get out of out of their group uh, against uh, Wales and uh, um, Australia. But look, England, I've, in terms of going a long way, I, f- I feel that that's the, you know, they've got their wake up call and it might actually trigger a different style of play from them, realizing that they can't just be boring against most teams. They might have to chance their arms. So, um, England to surprise in a way that um, maybe by being more expansive than what we've seen before. And then Samoa um, are the other team that I really think. Uh, have a good chance to actually play um, in England's pool. We all know about the quarterfinal log jam where the All Blacks have to play South Africa or Ireland, but there just is a real, a really good chance for Samoa and Fiji to do something great in this tournament. The next time we talk next Sunday, uh, the All Blacks would have played their first game. They would have, uh, they would have chalked up either a, uh, you know, a, a glorious win over the hosts or or, um, or, or something else. Uh, what do you predict though? A week out. I mean, how are you feeling about the All Blacks at the Rugby World Cup? Uh, I still feel good about the All Blacks, but I think that loss has probably done something where they realise now um, they they need to be. Uh, more assertive when it comes to selections and just, uh, you know, I've, you and I have talked about Leicester Whanganuku so so often. I know a lot of rugby people over here are so surprised that he doesn't get um, doesn't get much of a run and now they might just say, well, actually we do need him, even if it's off the bench, to provide some impetus. And then elsewhere, it's it really is a power game as well in the forwards. So how are they going to find that power? And um, and that's going to be the, the big key. I think losing to France uh, obviously isn't terminal. It's not the worst thing in the world. But um, really the All Blacks finding their mojo, I think it's doable. I, I still think they, they win the whole thing. Um, but you can see now across the board the sort of talent that we're talking about. And even when it comes to Samoa and Tonga, for example, receiving um, some of those old legends back, whether it's Charles Piatau or Stephen Luatua, it's for Fiji, there's guys like Caleb Muntz and um, Celestino uh, uh, Ravuto Mada from um, Fiji, from the Ndrua. These are two guys who, um, well, in the in the case of um, Ravuto Manda, he was with the with the New Zealand Warriors. So, I mean, the, this is where the talent sometimes goes off on its own little um, own journey and then comes back to to wherever they find a spot and. Um, I know both those players are wanted by the Chiefs. They ended up now playing international rugby f- for Fiji. So the talent is there across the board, and that's where I think Fozzie needs to work out exactly who's going to um, unlock what is still, I think, the most talented squad at the World Cup, and that's New Zealand. Intriguing uh, seven or eight weeks ahead in the Rugby World Cup. Other matters around in, in uh, the part of the world you're in at the moment. The most popular Australian up uh, in your neck of the woods is Ange Postacoglu, who's in charge of Tottenham. Another win this morning in the Premier League. That's three straight. They've been to Manchester United, uh, Bournemouth, and now Burnley 5-2 uh, in their latest outing. Um, they're already chanting his name from the stands. How popular is Big Ange up there? They love Big Ange. And, of course, they've never had an Australian um, manager in the Premiership. So all those sort of hardened um, football journos, they're not used to, you know, um, Australianisms. Like when they said, what's the secret behind your success, your early success? And he goes, I just copy Pep, mate. You know, (laughs) that was his reply. (laughs) And so, and you know what? This is the thing. They love it because... It's still a good line. Um, that the, you know, he's foxing a little bit. Um, and he's had this, I mean, I mean, that is early days, but he's done it all without Harry Kane, who left abruptly um, just before the start of the season to Bayern Munich. So Pep's in, I mean, uh, Ange is there after, you know, he, he coached in the in the A-League with a lot of success, I think mainly with um, Melbourne Victory. Is that right? I think um, 
he was, or was he? Brisbane Raw. Um, yeah, Bris- no, Br- Br- yeah, Brisbane Raw was where he had his major success. Yeah, that's right. Br- Brisbane Raw. Sorry, and then he uh, was at uh, Glasgow Celtic, where he's is very, you know, very successful. So this is the thing. He came over to. He's ended up at Spurs. They've gone through a whole lot of managers. He's this breath of fresh air. He says that all his mates from Aussie, twenty of them, are coming to watch the game. He, he's he's just having the time of his, of his life, but it can all turn to custard. But good on him. Let's go to cricket, where the Black Caps are currently playing England in a T20 series. I can't work this out. There's a 50 over World Cup coming up. I know they've got some one day internationals, 50 over matches against England in the next little while, but they're currently playing a T20 series. And I'm not just saying this because we're getting beaten by quite uh, some distance, or have been in the first couple. Why are we playing T20s at the moment? I know it's it, it's it's a weird way to do it. It's, it really is. I feel like New Zealand goes around the world just filling gaps in calendars. That's really our role. And um, if I can have a, an even bigger whinge, it's that uh, looking at our summer, I've been told by South Africa they're not going to send a full-strength test side. And Australia, we play them in a, in a two-match series. Meanwhile, they're quite happy to sort of play five, you know, match uh Ashes series. So we are just stocking filler, calendar fillers. That's all we do now, and um, th- that needs to change somehow. And, you know, we do have people um, high up on the ICC. In fact, I think we've got the president, don't we, these days, um, who's a Kiwi. So it's just shocking that we're being left by the wayside. And, um, and of course, now with T20s, you know how I feel about those. It's just really a bit of a lottery, but it's giving us zero confidence. And, um, and, just as a footnote to that, um, it's not all bad news, but I think this uh, guy, Dean Foxcroft, who's a big hitting South African batsman who comes into our ODI team, uh, to quote another commentator, remember the name, he could be something special and um, and let's hope he is for us. Let's hope so indeed. Yeah, we need uh, need something. And, and oh, look, I'm, I'm willing to kind of say that these T20s are pretty immaterial. You'll all, I, I spoke yesterday about this. You'll remember 1992, the Cricket World Cup, and, and I don't know if you remember what happened immediately before that, but we played England in three one-dayers here in New Zealand leading into that World Cup and got absolutely smashed in all three of them. And then uh, the New Zealand took us on a wonderful run through that World Cup. So who knows? Maybe history repeats. Good, good historic reference. I do remember that World Cup. And, yeah, it was amazing. And, of course, you know, if you look at uh, some of the um, tactics then that Martin Crow employed with Deepak Patel um, opening the bowling, um, Mark Greatbatch um, swinging big from the start. This is before any baseball or even before Saywag or anyone else. Um, th- this is kind of – I think we do need to get innovative if we're going to do okay at the ODI World Cup. So, um, well, you know, with Trent Bolt coming back, who's really – who's very familiar with the Indian conditions, I, I think it's actually not too bad. You know, it's, things – they augur well for me. I think the omens are good. All right, I do too. James, great to catch up. Uh, enjoy the rest of uh, your weekend uh, up in the Northern Hemisphere, and we'll chat again around about the same time next Sunday. Thanks, Piney. Up the wires. It's not so bad. We, we, things are going to turn around, OK? Oh, look, I've, I've got no doubt. I've got no doubt, James. Uh, sleep well up there, and uh, we'll look forward to more from you next Sunday. James McConey, big part of our Sundays here on News Talk ZB. For more from Weekend Sport with Jason Pine, listen live to News Talk ZB weekends from midday or follow the podcast on iHeartRadio.